Hi, welcome back to this tutorial. In the last one, we created our enemy attack class and we also allowed the enemy to continue attacking the player for as long as they are in the attack radius. In this episode, we'll be optimizing our enemy character a bit and building the start of their AI. So let's get started with that. In the enemy character, we're going to quickly go to the viewport and we're just going to set a few things right. We're going to get rid of this camera and camera boom because it's an enemy character and we don't need that. And we're also going to go to the capsule component and turn on hidden in-game rendering as that is sometimes set off in this particular case it was for me. So now we're going to want to create enemy movement and we're going to want to create this as a class. So in the classes folder we made we're just going to create a new blueprint class and an act component and we're going to name it enemy movement and we'll just double click that to open it and dock it at the top and we're also going to need to open the player library so for enemy movement we're going to really just have one we're going to do get new location and then we'll have another function which says go to location and the input of this location will need a vector which we'll call new location and the go to also need another input named enemy character which will be our character type and then in the get new location we're just going to need our enemy character and our output will need our new location which will be a vector so the reason we're opening up player library is because we're going to want to cast to our first person character to get their location so our enemy can follow the player. So we're going to add a new function in our player library called get player location. And we're just going to have an output of player location and that's a vector. And we're just going to cast a first person character using our player character as the object. And as first person character, we want to get actor location and return that as our player location. If the cast fails, we want another return and we're just going to return the origin of the world 0, 0, 0. So now on enemy movement, we want to say get new location, we'll get player location. And we don't need the enemy character as the input. And then in the go to location, we want to get AI controller using our enemy character as the actor being controlled. And then we want to say simple move to location and we're going to use our new location as the goal and I'm going to try and swap these round so now in our enemy character we want to add our component enemy movement and we're going to want to call this every certain length of time so that our game is optimized we don't want to call it in every frame because obviously a higher frame rate means we'll be calling it more often, but it does mean we'll be calling a lot of AI functions on the frame for each character, which is a bit inefficient. So instead, we want to have a time offset. And our time offset we're going to have by doing move time as a float variable, and that's going to work like our attack time. And then that's all we're really going to do. So we're actually going to do this before we check if we can attack the player because if the player's moved then we're going to want to move with the player. So we need the movement to come first. So we're going to get our move time and just like our attack time we're going to take this float add float and we're going to add our delta seconds to it. Then I'm going to set move time equal to this new value and then check using B and left click if this is greater than or equal to a 
a certain value. And that value, I'm going to use a variable called kmove delay, which will be a value, and we can change it to something like 0 0.1 for now. Using constants in your game is very good practice, and that's what this is. This is a constant. And we're just going to check if it is equal to that. If it is, then we want to call our enemy movement. And our enemy movement, we want to call go to location and get location. So let's call get location and then go to location. And we can actually put this in a function. So I'm going to put it in a function. We're going to call move enemy. And we're just going to take that and put it in here just to clear up some space in the event graph. The target is going to be our self. We're going to need the enemy movement for the target there. Sorry, the new location to the new location. And self will be the enemy character. And then on true, we'll just call that function. And on either false or true, we'll then check if we can attack. Now, obviously, as you can see, our blueprints are getting a little bit messy here with the more we add to it. So I'm just going to try and clear that up. a little. And now it's a bit more clear. OK, so now our character will move to the player's location at every 0.1 seconds. However, if we were to press play now, the character is just going to stand still a moment. So our enemy character is just standing there and they're not following us. They just they don't care about us. So first off, I'm just going to move this guy down a fair bit. And I'm going to rotate him. And now we need to create a nav mesh. And the nav mesh allows our the nav mesh allows our AI to walk about in the world. It gives them sort of boundaries they can move between. Um, that's a very lackluster way to explain it. Uh, you'd want to look up more AI if you want a more efficient way of what it does. So I'm just going to move into the middle of the screen. And if you notice, if you press P, you get this little green square that I have. And this is saying... The enemy AI can, well, just any AI can move in between these bounds in that green zone. So that's obviously a bit small. So we're just going to use the scale tool to scale this up. And we want it to cover our level. And scale it in the Y. Okay. So now when we press play, I don't know what happened there, I couldn't use it. You'll see our enemy character is now following me wherever I go. And you'll notice that the action is very smooth. That 0 0.1 seconds is just enough to give us an optimized efficiency for the AI to follow us and to be able to give us smooth turning. If it was any longer, we'd probably have some jagged turning. And as you can see, every time we move away, he's going to keep following. Okay, obviously the enemy there isn't killing me, as we do have the damage set up, but we don't have it so when our player dies, the player dies. Also, we don't have our health set to anything, so we need to set that to 100. I'm just going to add that in there, because I'll forget otherwise. In the next video, we're going to add uh, player events such as dying and destroying the enemy, and all sorts of that, and we'll be building up our now interactivity for the player. Now we have our enemy sorted. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't. The next video will be out a lot sooner than this one was. I was ill and couldn't record. Like, I literally had no voice. So it would have been a very bad tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.